Right, so in the A-level papers, there's such a small part of the spec. There's a lot of questions that they ask you about ethics, but generally what they tend to do is they don't just ask you, whereas in the GCSC they would say, please explain all the moral, ethical issues and, and, and things around that, and they'll make it clear that it's about that. They don't tend to do that with the A-level. They tend to give you a scenario and expect you to build that in somehow. But it's not just about that at A-level. With their 12 mark questions, they are looking for your technical understanding. Now, this is a 12 mark question. When you have a 12 mark question, there are usually three areas that you need to pull out of the question. All right? I will show you a mark scheme in a minute. But if there are 12 marks, generally split that up so that you've got four marks, which are four key points that show your technical understanding about it, but just four technical points is not going to be enough. It, you could write four technical points about each of the key areas that they want, but if you don't link them back to the actual scenario, you're not rewarded the marks. So uh, if it was talking about, the like in the mock we did, fetch the code execute cycle, all right, there was a point within that that talked about relating it back to the hardware. So if you didn't really relate it back to performance indicators and you just explained the areas, you're not going to get the marks. And often there's a, fi a thing that they put, there is a line of reasoning that has been followed, okay? That's what it means. It's showing you understand. So let's look at this. Supermarkets often gather information about their customers and the purchases that they make. All right. To me, this is talking about customers and purchases. So I'm looking at the key information I'm going to take away from this. Because at some point, I could talk about data and refer back to customers' data or refer back to the sort of purchases that I make. That's even before reading the rest of the question. Some of the information is collected at the checkout. So there's a key point of like where you're gathering the data there. Um, where the identity of the person is read from a loyalty card. So there's a loyalty card or a payment card using RFID. Even now, I can see I'm going to have to show that I understand how RFID works. I mean, it will say it in a minute. And a barcode reader is used to identify the products um, being purchased. By analyzing the purchases that a shopper has made, it might be possible to identify such things as to whether a shopper has children, is pregnant, or lives in a house with a garden, other types of analysis might include the amount of money a customer spends, the times that they choose to shop, or the differences in their habits. For example, all right, when I lived with my family, I've got three sisters. Okay, So when I lived with family members, my Tesco club card used to send me vouchers for sanitary products. That's not appropriate for me, okay? <laughs> I don't need to buy tampons, but I would get vouchers through the door because it would use that sort of information, all right? You can link this back to experiences that your family members have had if, if it comes to that sort of question, all right? Describe principles in operation. So again, it's, n it's not outright telling you I need three areas. It will al always say things like describe the principles of this. But you need to break it down. If there's 12 marks, there's three areas you're going to get marked on. All right? Describe the principles of operation of the hardware used to collect the information and discuss some of the ethical and legal issues that might arise. In your answer, you'll be assessed on your ability to follow a line of reasoning. Line of reasoning basically says, can you link it back to the scenario? Is it actually make sense to produce a coherent, relevant, and structured response? All right? So, the first area, can you pull up, let's see if you, you've pulled out those areas. What are the key areas, before I even look at the mark scheme, what can you pull out that you would need to talk about there? Yep. <coughs> Good, there's your two areas. One more area. Just the ethics and legal issues. The ethics and legal issues, all right. Um, so, just to show you that before I go through it. One area on how RFID works, one area on how the barcode works. You could have actually used CMOS camera methods as well, all right? And 
There's your area three, ethical issues, all right? So, what you would be expected to do, you've broken it down, and I'm gonna show you here. So in RFID, this does not mean you need to <laughs> write down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things, okay? You've got, you've only got a certain amount of time to get this down in the exam, but you're showing you technically understand how that piece of hardware works. So, with RFID, there is a tag. So you talk about that there is a tag. You talk about how the RFID transmits a signal. You might even want to relate it back to how you've got near field and talk about how those tags need to be right next to it and how you've got tags that are further af afield as well. But what this is saying here, RFID contains a, a, an antenna, all right? There's memory tags on the customer's data. RFID transmits a signal. The signal activates when you're near it. The RFID sends a radio wave. The radio wave converts the signal back to, to the binary data. The RFID tag is a passive device. The RFID transmits over a very short range. Okay, so that's you showing that you understand how it works. It's still not really talking about the ethical issues yet. But you've got your marks for technical understanding. How can I relate this back, though? Because notice, the mark schemes that you may find online aren't going to tell you how you relate it back to the question. So let's have a discussion. How would you relate this back to the scenario? So it says, all right, payment cards are have RFID in it, okay? Also, the loyalty cards has RFID, all right? So before you think about going... Sometimes you may blend some of these areas together. So, to relate it back, how would I do this? Um, how the systems are integrated within <coughs> the loyalty cards, so you can state that you have a passive RFID chip inside of the loyalty card, as well as where the transponders are, uh, such as within the um, uh, cash machines. Um, so that, that's where you can um, communicate between the cards. What, what I was more getting at, though, is kind of li linking it loosely back to the scenario so you can show that you thought about it. So, oh, the customer ha has their RFID inside their loyalty card, but then what you could say is that, but there's no guarantee of whose loyalty card it is. You don't need to necessarily, at that point, start talking about your ethical issues and just say, talk about it loosely. So you could say, like, the customer, whoever it is, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be their loyalty card, but that is scanned at the computer. The computer doesn't know whose loyalty card it is, okay? So you could just mention it loosely before you go into it in more detail there, but then you've got that link back to the original scenario. That's what I'm trying to say, all right? Now, the next one was how barcode readers work. So you talk then about how the <coughs> hardware works, how that laser is shone onto the barcode, what happens with the light that is absorbed, all right? So the barcode moves across the reader, light is reflected back, black is absorbed, and then you can talk about the ones and zeros that are reflected, yeah? So the barcode reader knows whether something is a one or a zero. What you could even do is talk about how in that system there is a database that reads the ones and zeros and compares that and finds it against the data in the in the database, all right? What they might do with some of these questions is where they've talked about ethical and legal, they might actually talk about how RFID and how barcode readers are not accurate for a database. So then you could link that back and say, well, what about when customers steal products? Well, the system's not going to update when those products go missing. What if a barcode is damaged you can't, you, you can't scan that product, and if somebody types it in manually and types in the wrong number, they might have typed in the wrong product. There's so many discussion points you can have around it, but make sure you link it back. Here's now where we need to look at the ethical issues. I will say, a lot of the time when it comes to ethical issues, these are where you actually drop the marks. I can say most of my computer scientists are so strong in their technical knowledge, <coughs> but will lose it when it comes to the theoretical knowledge of ethics. The reason why is you don't demonstrate you understand data protection. You might say, oh, customers 
are going to be using a loyalty card to buy products. They're going to be using their bank cards to buy products, okay? That information is held on the system. If that gets leaked, that breaks the Data Protection Act. That's where people often go short. What you've got to do to understand, to show, I'm not even going to read this off this for a minute right here, but you've got to talk about, oh, if a company holds personal information such as a loyalty card or bank details, the, customer, the, the company needs to comply with GDPR. For example, the company must keep data protected. They must keep it encrypted and keep it secure. The company is not allowed to sell that information onto somebody else without that customer's permission. The company must make sure that if a customer asks for their data, they have to give it back to them. That's showing you really understand that law. Do you see what I'm saying? Just by saying, oh, we've ethically got to look after it, that's a very vague response and it's not showing a good line of reasoning. But then you could say how that information might not be accurate if for example, you use your friend's club card, or you, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah? Uh, just for clarification, sir, um, for you to be able to score high marks, could you just nearly bullet point your GDPR um, statements? I would avoid bullet pointing questions, if um, I'm honest. Not bullet pointing, but just listing them explicitly, um, not, uh, you know, just saying, um, if you're going to list the points to show you understand your technical knowledge, link it back to the scenario and say how it affects the customer or how it affects the scenario. Don't just say, oh, the GDPR law is this, 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 and this. Link it back. Give it some reasoning. Otherwise, you're going to drop your mark. Um, sir, uh, also, let's say you have your GDPR. How, how many points do you think you should make? On I would... I would I would say roughly valid points at least three in each area to demonstrate you understand it, okay? Minimum three, hedging your bets, go up, but link it back to you so you get your chain of reasoning, okay? Uh, if you have a look here, ethics, customers may believe date, so we're just going to, I'm just going to read these off here. Uh, customers may believe uh, that data about what they buy could be leaked, so customers are going to need to know that, that it's protected. Uh, items may be considered, some items are considered sensitive. For example, um, if people have certain infections or, or, or they're buying products to help them feel better, like medical products, they don't want people knowing about that. Um, people uh, need to understand what is done with their data, all right? And so you could link it back and be, give examples of products they might buy. All right. Um, customers need to decide whether they allow the store to collect data about them or not. Uh, can the company be confident um, that other companies aren't going to share their information? So you've got these issues. But then here's where the GDPR. So that was ethical. <coughs> so ethical, remember that ethical is like whether it's morally right or wrong. Right? Ethics are very a uh, personal thing for a company, whereas law is what you are required to do. Law is your GDPR. Law is your um, Copyright Designs and Patents Act. Law is your Computer Misuse Act. Do you know those laws? Okay. So here, GDPR, inform the customers, I said that, keeping the data secure, need to consider if you, the data is being used for the purposes it's being used for, as a teacher, I need to keep your d personal information safe and I'm not allowed to give out personal information, all right? I was asked if I could uh, give, give somebody their, their, uh, their, their grade back to another student. No, GDPR says I can't do that. I have to wait till that student is in school or I ensure that I do secure postage to that student to ensure that they get their work. So they're all discussion points that are very valid. I'll show you now how the structure is for full marks. Line of reasoning, again, that basically means have you linked it back, all right? Is it coherent, relevant? Relevant is important, all right? There have been times where I've been reading answers to these questions, even when I've been examining, and some people have started talking about um, how, for example, you're talking about customers shopping and protecting them, their sensitive items. But then they might talk about uh, something completely random, something to do with uh, where they're going on holiday. You know, it's going to link back to the scenario. Um, 
I had one student that started linking it back to um, dark matter once. It's just, it's got to, you've got to make sure you stay relevant. Uh, the, perp uh, the response covers all three areas indicated in the guidance below uh, in sufficient detail to show the student has a good understanding of at least two of these. So you don't necessarily have to know all of the three areas like really, really well detailed, but you do need to have a structured response and make sure at least two of them are really well detailed to get at least into the 10. All right, and then as an examiner, if somebody's got a really well-developed answer with the third one, I'm going to go, okay, yeah, I'm heading up to the 12 there. All right, so that's one of those. Mm.